I'm gonna do Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season two, episode four. Excuse my hair. Um, I got a headache, but we're gonna get through this video. Um, it started off with Brandy busting in the studio where I left off last week with Brandy busting in the studio. I'm already gonna know right now through this season. I'm not gonna like her. It, it I like her husband more than I like her, and I'm gonna tell y'all why later. But I'm not going to like this broad. She is, she needs to get her shit together. She needs to go seek professional help. Um, I don't understand why she, okay, I get some of it, but the extraness that she do, I don't get. Even the extraness that she do in the confessionals, when she was moving from side to side, I'm like, bitch, you still look invisible, like, eat something, like, ugh, whatever. But anyway, she busts in there tripping off of the girl having her arm on his shoulder. And his dumb ass going to say, I didn't even notice it was on her, my shoulder. Please don't make it worse, idiot. Please don't make it worse. But I'm sorry. Regardless if that was the studio, everybody kicking it, whatever. That is still your husband place of employment. Like, that's where he make his money. I don't give a fuck. You wait till that nigga get home. You never go to your man's job and flip out the way she did. And then she like, you want to know why these bitches don't know you married? You want to know why? And this bitch is fucking going through her purse. I'm black. I'm from Compton. I'm sorry. A black bitch going to her purse. I don't want to sit there and wait to see what comes out that motherfucker. But they all sitting there trying to figure out, well, maybe because it's part of the script. Okay. But <laughs> she pulls out the ring. And he is just over it. Like, you really doing this? But she is flipping out. They cleared out the studio. She's still going off like, what do you think? How do you think I'm supposed to feel all this bullshit? Like I said, I understand her being mad because yeah you fucked up you don't leave your ring at home but to show up at his job i just thought that was way out of fucking line so he while she going off acting like a banshee he leaves i wasn't mad at him i was not mad at him for leaving her standing there looking like a fucking idiot so then you move on from kamaya to kamaya kamaya meets up with messy blogger because this motherfucker, by the end of this, I was liking him at the beginning. By the end, can't do him. Um, blogger uh, Jason Lee. Now, I give you props, Jason Lee, for, you know, your work or whatever. Being a blogger, working with celebrities. Hey, I'm trying to get there. So, I can't be mad at him that for that. But I don't want to be the messy motherfucker. Um, and that's what he is. But they meet up and they're talking about Lil Fizz or whatever and how Lil Fizz was going at her or whatever um, and saying she was an appetizer and all this kind of stuff. Then they got on Lil Fizz sex life, sex game and how he can't get it up and all this kind of shit. And I'm sitting there like, I understand it's your friend, but this nigga's still a blogger. <laughs> you might have to watch what you say up to him. But he was saying that he wasn't going to put it out. But I was just like, hmm, he taking all this in. And he, it just wasn't sitting right to me. But um, I wasn't mad at her for talking about Fizz. I'm not. Everybody be talking about his pictures and all that. And I'm sitting there like, aha, they talking about your pictures. But somebody that slept with you was saying, hmm, I'm just saying. So everybody that up big and well in doubt. Don't mean they can work with it. And, hey, she put it out there. So, I wasn't mad. I wasn't even... Only reason why I wasn't mad is because the way he put her out there last week and was talking about um how he was acting like she was a stalker and shit and she moving too fast. And like she said, if I was moving too fast, why were you giving me a key to your house? I told y'all, he, he moved quick with women, period. Because we saw how he moved with... um. What's that girl, Amanda? Was that her last, her name last season? He moving, trying to move quick with Nikki. Like, he moves quick with women, so whatever. But that was that. M Miles meet up with Hazel because he wants to talk about um, Milan not answering him. And she in the studio rapping about some no chill. 
I can't even go in on her music because it sounds like everything else that's out there. So, shit, how can I hate on her motherfucking music and we bumping everybody else's music out here? All shit sounds the same to me. Um, so, he just basically trying to, you know, spill his guts about how it's hard for him. And in this instance, I understood where he was coming from when he, you know, he say everybody in his family is in the church. He was, I think he said he was a youth pastor and shit like that. So how do he come out? And he felt like he needs to do this at his own pace. And Mal, Milan needs to understand that. And I agree. But I'm like, don't string Milan on until you figure out what you want to do. Because that's not fair for him to wait on you until you figure out what you want to do. But in the same token, Milan cannot push him to come out. It's not going to happen. Then he's going to resent you for making him come out. And I'm sorry, Milan, you kind of signed up for this. Milan kind of signed up. You knew this dude wasn't completely out. You knew he wasn't comfortable of coming out i'm sorry so you can't force him to come out that's something like he said has to be on his own time but all this secretive shit and you going back and forth to amber through him that shit ain't cool that shit just ain't fucking cool um but she was telling him like you know you need if you wants to be with milan you need to do something big and to show him that you wants to be with him so he was like okay um so then you have Fizz at at the club, and he walks in the club with damn dark ass low glasses on. I don't get it. This this is why I know this nigga's always high. He's always high because why are you walking in a club with whatever? Um. So I think it was April in the club with Nikki Nia. Somebody was fucking. No, it wasn't Nia. I think it was April. Somebody was in the club with Nikki. So they having fun in the club. He pulls her to the side. They both excited that they single. He flirting, she flirting. I didn't I just feel like their relationship is awkward to me. I feel like she just looked more like a grown ass woman playing with a little boy. So it just don't work. Um but I don't like Nikki. And only reason why, because Nikki feels like she just looked better than it every fucking body that's why i don't like her and i'm like you only probably look think you but you have to buy your looks to look better than everybody you know what i'm saying that bothers me when she calling people weak bitches i'm like come on now like bitch you was insecure enough to go get some surgery that you probably didn't fucking need like shut up then she mad because Kamaya had been calling her plastic on the internet. I'm like, well, bitch, are you mad at the world? Because the world has been calling you plastic. She don't know you. We don't know you. I didn't see the problem. And if you so secure in yourself, her calling you plastic wouldn't have fucking bothered you. That shows you her insecurity. So then he wants to take her out and she going to go out. Okay, who cares? Ray and Prince says... Oh, my God, he needs to get off TV because he shows that he, if them cameras were not on, he's very controlling and it might be a little abusive. I'm just saying he just shows a fucked up side that you got to be careful of. But he wants to sit down and talk to her and he wants to tell her people that she don't need to be hanging around certain people. He brings up the Drake party. She like, how the fuck you know what I'm doing? You got people up in the wind. I'm like, yeah, bitch, his ex-girlfriend that your dumb ass is dumb enough to play with. I'm just saying. And then I'm sitting there like, bitch, you are in L.A., a place where everybody know that you would Ray. You at Drake's party. I'm there to Drake and pay because they, they always throwing his name. And I'm sitting there like, damn. Like, y'all usually don't say, oh, well, you was at the party. Y'all throwing names out. I'm just hoping Drake getting paid. But he was just, she trying to figure this out. And I'm trying to sit like, you stupid. You hanging with him. And then he like. He doesn't want her to go out. He wants her to be at home. And she was like, no, I'm going to go out. You know, I've been in the house for damn near three years. And it's time for me to go out. And he like, you not a man. I said, oh, did I miss some shit? 
I wanted to punch him through the screen at that moment. Like, what the fuck do that supposed to mean, my dude? Like, come on. You have had, do you tell Brandy not to go out? Do you tell your homegirl Brandy Lil B not to go out? Um, I don't, I, I didn't get it. Uh, maybe he feel like just his woman not able, shouldn't be able to go out. But, motherfucker, we are in 2015. It's not even that goddamn type of party. This is where motherfucking mamas need to cut the umbilical cord on sons at a certain age because they expect they women to be exactly like they mom. Because I think that's how his mom was, was always in the house, catering to her husband, and that's what he want. You don't always get that. Especially now, now these damn days. Women, back then, the man was the breadwinner. He was doing it so women couldn't go out. You, I mean, you know, didn't have no need to go out. They was at home doing what they had to do. Now women are working and doing things like, come on, Ray. Like, I want to punch him for him to tell her that she was not a man. That it's okay for him to go out, but not for her to go out. Then he got some mad talking about he about to go to work. I'm like, so now he throwing another jab at you, bitch, that you don't work. <laughs> so I'm like, how, how many jabs do you supposed to take, princess, from this dude before you open your eyes and say, this dude is going to end up hurting me because he crazy and the motherfucker, I'm just saying. Anyway, Brandy and Max, this probably was my best part <laughs> Of the episode, I promise. I laughed so hard on this segment with Brandy and Max. So, he didn't come home after the studio. Strike one. Fuck all that. I don't give a fuck how mad we are at each other. You gonna bring your ass home. That, I'm just, just saying. But, he and, he, to me, he had checked out this relationship. This bitch is so fucking crazy that he have checked out. And he made mentions that he gon' he keep his ring off on purpose until this bitch act right. I was like, see, he had checked out of this marriage. But she is all, like I said, she was all in the concession. I was turning to the side, getting on my fucking nerve. Then, he finally comes home. So them so they can talk. She like, what's up? She's shaking and shit. He like, what the fuck you shaking for? Like, you making me nervous. I was like, you. this is some typical. I'm telling you, this whole segment was some typical nigga shit if you ever saw it. I promise. I was just like, this some real shit. This ain't no scripted shit. This some real ghetto ass shit because I've seen it in the hood. I've seen it in my family a lot of times. <laughs> so... She was like, what's up with us or whatever, and they start arguing about the whole goddamn ring thing, and he called her, he was like, why would I wear a ring to rep a crazy person? I said, oh, I'm telling you, this, I was so here for him more than her in this conversation because the bitch is extra, and like I said, he had checked out. I felt the <laughs> See, that don't make no sense. He never wants to get in my video, but all of a sudden, he yelling from the back about the dude talking about he don't he don't negotiate with terrorists. I'm sitting there like, this is some straight nigga shit. I, what, I'm telling y'all, I laughed so hard from this segment of the dude talking about her. She was like, um, he was like, sometime I wish I could be by myself. Life would be easy. She was like, are you high? I was just like, oh, wow. I guess she felt like, motherfucker, like, we were supposed to be on script. You you weren't supposed to really tell me how you really, really feel. <laughs> and it just went left for her. She thought she was going to pop off, and egg was all on her fucking face. Like I said, he called her a terrorist. He was like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. So he gets up and he walks out. He was like, you know what I think about this ring? You know what I think about this ring? And she was like, wait, wait, my neighbors, our neighbors, you embarrassing us. Wait, I'm rolling as she running down this damn driveway. Then he throws the ring. She like, wait, go get it. Go get it. Go get the ring. Our neighbors, you embarrassing me. I'm just sitting there like, girl, 
Girl, you was just hard in the house. You was talking all that shit. Soon as the nigga gets up to leave, straight little ghetto shit where the girl runs behind the dude after you was talking all that shit, telling him how you don't give a fuck and all that shit. Then he gets up and walk out. Then you chasing this nigga down the driveway. He go get us in the car. She jumps in front of the car. That motherfucker was like, okay, you want to jump in front of the car? That nigga backed up down the street. I was, I'm telling y'all, I was in here rolling because I felt like I've seen it so many times where girls do this shit where they act real hard and then when the dude be like, all right, then, bitch, peace out. They be like, wait a minute, hold up. I didn't really, 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 really mean what I said. Just a little bit, but not a lot of it. <laughs> oh, my God. I was so here for him backing up down that damn street. I just wanted to keep rewinding that part. I'm just saying. So then you hear you come with little bitch ass kids again. Fizz and April, they meet up and they're talking about the whole Kamaya situation. And I didn't like April in this situation because I kept saying, but you don't know what the fuck is he telling her behind closed doors. And she was talking about Kamaya and I wasn't feeling that. And then he was talking about he, how he broke off things with Kamaya. Now he fucking with Nikki. And since Nikki, her homegirl, she pumping that situation up. And I'm sitting there like, no, that should just look all kind of awkward and wrong. But okay. So then she was like, well, I'm supposed to be meeting up with this guy named Jason or whatever. And um, then Jason ended up walking up. So, matter of fact, was it when? Matter of fact, Jason ended up walking up. And they were skeptical. She was kind of skeptical about talking to him because she know he's a blogger. And then he was like, well, I'm um, a friend of Kamaya's. He kind of brings up Kamaya or whatever and, you know, he was like, you know, I just met up with her the other day. She was talking about you, Fizz, and how you did her wrong. And April kept jumping in. And I'm like, shut up. You don't know what the fuck Fizz and told Kamaya. Shut up. This because that's your homeboy. You don't know what the hell was said. So for you to insert your little fucking conversation, I wasn't feeling that. But they were talking about um, her dating, and he was like, she need to come get her shit. I hate the way he talk about women. You know what I'm saying? He just bring the bitch out of him, so I just, whatever. So he was like, um, she only tripping because the dick was too good. Jason was like, well, that ain't what I heard. Like, she told me that uh, you couldn't get it up. All of a sudden, he was like, oh, no, that's because her legs was open and she was shaking for me. And I'm sitting there like, boy, what dinner? Mm -mm, mm -mm. You're a little kid. Everybody still look at you as B2K. Wasn't nobody looking at you as no, no legs shaking like R. Kelly. Boy, sit down. Sit down. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I can't stand that little kid. I really can't. So then Miles and Milan, they meet up at Bezos. I like Bezos. They got good food, drinks, all that good stuff. My homegirl had a party there. So, um, he's telling him, well, I'm trying to show you that I want to be with you. And I'm sitting there like, dude, you meeting up at Bezos. Ain't no hip hop people right there. Like, stop playing. Stop playing. You knew to meet that dude where you knew that it was acceptable for gays to be at. That's why you met him at Bezos. Please go meet him somewhere at the Waffle House on Manchester. I'm just saying, like, don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. But he was trying to show him that, oh, we're out in public, so this is a sign that I want to be with you. Okay, whatever. Then he showed him another sign by getting a tattoo with their initials on, like, his shoulder blade. And I'm like, fool, he could put a shirt on. Then you were so dumb. Like, okay, but we're going to go along with this. And Mavon is all excited now and wanting to drop the drawers for him because he ain't got a fucking tattoo that he can cover up or put a shirt on so can't nobody see it. Or he can make up some shit. He can say it's his great-grandmama, great-granddaddy. I don't know, but you dumb. Um, to me, tattoos don't show that you want to be with somebody for the rest of your life. That are you want to be committed to them. That's dumb, especially nowadays. The way motherfuckers tattooing up their body, you won't even notice the shit if you keep putting shit around it. Um, Fizz and Nikki, they go to a little theater that he got a little stock in. I'm like, is that the damn thing that's by USC that I was like, oh, let's leave out of here because it's kind of dirty. I don't know. It just looked like that that theater. But they go, and they're talking in there, and she's talking about... Or that's when she was telling him about um, 
she's going to be working with Jason Lee. And he was, like, skeptical, like, be careful. Um, and they start talking about Kamaya again. I'm like, y'all giving this girl a lot of damn props for y'all not to can't stand this girl. But they talked about her. And then Nikki talking about, um... You want me to help you get her stuff out? I'm sitting there like, what y'all just talking about princess touching Tiara stuff? Now you want to touch the next bitch stuff? See, this is how bitch get hurt. You touch other bitch stuff. Mm -mm, don't play that. And I was just, that's not grown, grown of you. You should have been like, okay, you handle that situation. Tell her to come get her stuff. And then we go from there. But you don't tell a motherfucker that you ain't even in a relationship with. Let's go help. You want me to help you move her stuff? No, that's how bitches get stitches. I'm just saying. Mm -mm. Um. Then they was talking about her being plastic again. Bitch, you are. I am like said, you can't be mad at the truth. April and Princess go shopping. And they're talking about Ray and Tierra and this whole Drake party situation. And so she sets Tierra up, and I was so here for it. I was so, so here for it, because she was like, I feel like she set me up, so I'm about to set this bitch back up. And she was like, I'm going to text her and say a girl's weekend in Vegas, and if she, if Ray find out, then that bitch wouldn't say it. I said, I'm so here for this. I'm so here for this because of the way Tierra's doing this, girl. I was so here for Princess setting Tierra back up, and it worked. So, hey, I wasn't mad. Nikki and Jason meet up. This is why I stopped liking Jason. Nikki and Jason meet up, and they're talking about her uh, helping him brand, help her brand or whatever. And he's going to talk to some other bloggers to help her brand and all this shit. So then she was like, well, yeah, I want you to work with Hazel because, you know, she's a publicist. And he was like, no, she not. And he just started running down on fucking Hazel. And she, she was like, well, I didn't know that you felt like that. But I invited Hazel here, and he was like, why'd you do that? He was like, oh, shit, like, oh, shit, I was just talking about the girl, and now she's here. So Hazel walks up, and, you know, she was like, I didn't know that you guys had beef or whatever, but I just want to keep it professional. And he just started going in on Hazel once again about her not being a publicist, and she was like, some, I think she said Charles Barkley or some shit, and she was like, I made people famous, and he was like, who, who? I think that's when she said Charles Barkley. But he going off on her about her being an aspiring artist and her being homeless. And she was like, I've never been homeless. And because, yeah, you was down with here. But I'm like, why are you going so hard? If she's a publicist or fucking not, that's up to Nikki to want to work with her. Like, why are you bashing her? Like, this is dumb. This don't make yourself look good as a blogger. I don't know. He, he just rubbed me the fucking wrong way. And then he did the fucking absolute most. When she went back at him and was like, you're never going to be more than like a media takeout. Because I guess he said he do stuff like the shade room and boss up and stuff like that. But when she was like, you're never going to be more than like a media takeout. Ain't nobody going to take your ass serious and shit. He gets mad and throws a drink in her face. He should have got his ass all kind of fucking whooped. I'm sorry. He should have got his ass whooped. That was such a bitch ass move. That was such a bad ass move on your brand, your business. Like, really? Like, I, I just think he should have got his ass whooped. TT, Tier, Amber, and Monique to meet up for lunch. Amber just venting about Miles and how she's tired of waiting and she really wants to be with him. She's going to have one more talk with him, yada, 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 bullshit. And I'm like, girl, you in for a rude motherfucking awakening. Um, Tier brings up Princess and how uh, the, the Vegas text came up. And Monique and Amber was like, you sure? Like, she ain't trying to set you up. And she was like, why would she do that? And whoop, whoop, whoop. Bitch, you play right in her hands, and I was so here for it. She was like, I'm just going to forward this to Ray. I said, yeah, this is why I'm so waiting for Princess to whoop that ass. I'm so waiting for Princess to whoop her ass because of that. Um, Sis and the little plastic bitch, um, they in his kitchen. I guess they had just made a little breakfast or whatever. But I'm like, why are y'all both sitting on the counter? Why? We couldn't move this to the living room. We had to film this in this spot. Why do this niggas? He balling. Why don't he have no like bar stools, no little stools around the counter where y'all don't have to sit your nasty asses on the fucking counter? Y'all was at my grandma's house or at my house. Y'all would have got your ass whooped sitting your ass on the counter. That's nasty. Mm-mm. That's nasty. 
So, anyway, they talking about uh, Jason Lee throwing the drink on Hazel and how it wasn't cool. And he was like, well, I told you it was something wrong with that dude. So, then they start talking about Kamaya and her stuff. Then Kamaya end up coming over. Kamaya's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know, why is Nikki dressed like that? I was like, because she fucked him last night, so she had her night cloud. Because they had been spending time together, I guess. Um, Told you he moved real fast. He got the next bitch already up in the house. He moved real quick. And then watch Nikki. He's going to be talking about you, too. So then um, they both just start attacking her about... What she said to Jason about him and her being plastic. And she like, wait, hold the fuck up. Y'all not going to come at me like that. Like, what the fuck? Like, she was like, you're not going to come at me like that. And you're not going to come at me like that. Because I would kick your ass. And I said, please go over there and snatch her ass up. Please. Because I I just felt like Nikki was just all kind of fucking wrong. Like, stay in your fucking lane. Then he just going off on her. You need to get your shit. I'm like. Oh, he is such a bitch dude. Like, all oh, Love and Hip Hop's just got these such bitch-ass dudes on there that is irritating. That I just want... I just think he just didn't get a whooping when he was little and he need one now. He need a good-ass, thick, black, brown belt. Just whoop his ass. Because he a little kid to me. So I, I just... Mm-mm. But the way he was talking to that girl, he should have got his ass whooped. He was talking about, um, because she was saying, you're not going to talk to me. Nikki over there talking about, well, I made you a gift bag for the next nigga house. See, that's where you get your ass whooped at. I'm just saying, Nikki, you should get your ass whooped. I'm just saying. So then he was like, get, get out of my house. He kept calling her a bitch. And I'm just like, wow. Because she threw the gift bag at Nikki, which she was supposed to. She could she should have threw her hands. But, hey, you couldn't get over there. You throw the next best thing. Because I didn't see no canisters. Because I would have been throwing canisters and all kind of shit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But, yeah. He was such a bitch. He was such a bitch. She was like, okay, let me get the gift bag. And then she threw the shit again at Nikki. And I was so here for it. But, anyway, that was my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about it. Um, What was your highlights of it? What you didn't like? I don't know. We could just talk about it in the this, um, comment section. Make sure you check out Ashley Miller, Mike B, um, Forrest Rocks, uh, my girl Squeaky Jones. Please, please, please say a prayer for our brother, say Sean Bradley and his family. You know, his son's still in the hospital going through. His grandmother passed away today. So we just going to, you know, wrap our arms around him and show him lots of love and let him know that we're here for him. But we are really, really praying in here for you, especially here in my family. Like, I couldn't even imagine. So, you guys, make sure you guys are um, really praying for him. Make sure you're supporting me by getting your uh, It's All About Support t-shirts. I will leave the link in the description box. Follow me on all social media sites by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. And I'm your girl, Miss Nick, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace out.